Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always. Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him. And we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Those who do not love me do not keep my words, yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Think back. See if your memory will allow you to go way back in time. Remember when you were about tall enough to reach your mother's knee. See if you can remember what life was like back then. Think about the experience of feeling safe. Think about the knowledge that if you just clung to mom tight enough, the world was okay. There was nothing that could ever get you. You were safe. You were secure. The world was right because somebody was with you to always protect you, care for you, guide you, help you, love you, embrace you, and lead you along at the journey of every day. Imagine the world, what it was like back then, how safe and secure and perfect the world was. Now, fast forward to today. If you're anything like me, if you're anything like a normal adult human being, the world is very different. Even if you're not an adult yet, you know that the world is still very different for you than when you were the height of your mother's knee. Allow me to share a story with you. It was a week before I was ordained a priest, and Father Robert, so this is less than a year ago, Father Robert called me and I thought I was in trouble. And he said, Peter, what are you doing this week? And I told him I had a couple of meetings. I don't, I don't remember exactly what was going on. But I thought I would be busy helping everybody set everything up for all the great celebrations in the Mass and, and all that great stuff. And he said to me, he says, no, 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 no. He said, cancel your meetings, get in the car, go away, and spend this week in prayer. I want you, he said to me, I want you to pray that the Holy Spirit gives you a very special blessing. You need to take this opportunity. Don't let it pass. Pray. I said, okay. So I called up a friend who's a priest in Fall River. I got in the car and I, off I went. And I got to tell you what, I don't remember the last time in my life that I was filled with that kind of anxiety. I couldn't sleep. I could barely pray. I could distract myself when he and I went for a walk for some ice cream one evening and we chatted about life. But, but the very idea of what it was that I was preparing me preparing for filled me with anxiety and fear like I have not known in a very long time, if ever. I couldn't sleep, and one night I was praying. It was 1.30 in the morning. And something came over me. There was something that moved me, something that touched me, something washed over me, and I was so filled with this notion of, I can't do this, I'm not good enough, I'm not capable enough, I've got no idea what I'm doing. Who am I to presume to, to, to do this? And the power of the Holy Spirit came on me in a new way that moment, and the answer was, you're right. You can't. I can. All those worries and the anxieties that you know, that I knew in that moment, that we all struggle with day in and day out, the fear, the doubt, the insecurity, the worry, the guilt, the shame, all of that stuff is real. It's right. We can't. As we approach life, if we struggle with faith, as we try to live as we should, as we try to love others better than we have, as well as we know we should, and as we constantly fall short, as we constantly try for more, we know we're not good enough. But the Holy Spirit is. And the Holy Spirit has been. The Holy Spirit has been poured into our hearts. And in that moment, I knew 
I was doing was a mistake. I was focusing on me, not on God, not on the power of the Holy Spirit that had led me to that moment. Please, don't ever let yourself become too bogged down by the worry and the anxiety of this life. Just stop thinking about yourself and pray for the Holy Spirit. Consider what we heard in our first reading. How ridiculous this picture is. Just really appreciate what we heard. Here's the apostles and the disciples. 120 of them. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was there. They're in the upper room. They have no idea what to do. They had just spent three incredible years with Jesus. They saw him work miracles. They saw him cast out demons. They saw him raise some people from the dead. They heard him preach. They saw him suffer and die. They saw him rise from the dead and ascend into God. And there they were, afraid. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? They witnessed firsthand the power of Jesus Christ. And they were scared. They were afraid. They didn't know what to do. So they were in the upper room waiting. Clueless, without inspiration, bogged down with fear, worry, and anxiety. I want to tell you, if the apostles and the disciples of Jesus knew that type of difficulty, insecurity, and pain, it's okay if you do too. It's completely all right. These guys are no better than we are. We're no better than them. If they just had the most personal experience of Jesus Christ and they were still weighed down, it's all right if you are. It's all right if you want to go deeper in your faith, but you don't know how. It's all right if you want to become a better person, but you don't know how. It's okay if you want to struggle with the guilt and the shame and the insecurity, but you don't know how. They didn't either. It's okay. Because the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, has been given to you. We heard in the gospel, Jesus spoke about another advocate, a gift from the Father, the greatest gift you will ever be given. But I want to I share something with you because it's really hard to translate this word that Jesus used. It doesn't just mean an advocate. The word paraclete that Jesus used means defender, protector, helper, comforter, assistant, aid, advocate, solicitor, counselor, mediator, one who pleads, one who makes urgent requests. This is the Holy Spirit. Imagine the experience of peace as you clung to your mother's leg. Imagine the world as it was so long ago, and then understand that that's exactly the security, the joy, the advocacy, the love, the support, the defense, the kindness, and the embrace that the apostles finally knew. No longer were they huddled in fear. No longer were they weighed down by insecurity, guilt, and shame. No longer was the world this place that was going to destroy them. Now they were set free. They finally understood because the Holy Spirit has been given to them. Today, we celebrate the Holy Spirit. Today, we pray that God sends the Holy Spirit in our lives more deeply. Today, we appreciate that no longer do we have to worry about our own issues, our own shortcomings, our own insecurities, but rather, this wonderful Spirit given to us sets us free. This wonderful Spirit given to us makes us true children of so wonderful a Father. As we were wonderful children of so loving of a mother so long ago and knew security as we clung to her. So now the Holy Spirit clings to us and draws us into the life of the Father. Now we know in the Holy Spirit the same peace, the same freedom, the same security, the same forgiveness of sins, the depth of a relationship with God that we could have ever dreamed of. This is the power of the Holy Spirit. 
One last thought. It is right and good for us to pay special attention when the Eucharist is consecrated on the altar. You know, you kind of hear the bells ringing. Sometimes the bells are ringing. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yes? Yes? Okay. Please appreciate it. Normally, we think that the moment of consecration is when the priest says, this is my body, or later, this is my blood. And that is one of the moments of consecration. But the first, the first moment of consecration is when the priest puts his hands like this. And the priest calls down the Holy Spirit on this altar, calls down the Holy Spirit on this gift of bread and wine. And it's the Holy Spirit that consecrates. It's the Holy Spirit that takes ordinary bread and wine and turns it into the true presence of Jesus Christ for us. I promise you, the Holy Spirit can do the same for you. The Holy Spirit can transform your lives as it transforms the Eucharist. The Holy Spirit can change you as it changes bread and wine. The Holy Spirit can draw you into the presence of Christ as it turns bread and wine into the true presence of Christ. The Holy Spirit can give you freedom and peace that you've never known. It can fill you with a joy that you've only dreamed of. Give 